Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about Blood from the Mummy's Tomb. This is a Hammer film, it actually came out as a double feature with Dr. Jekyll and Sister Hyde. Uh, we already talked about that one. Uh, Blood from the Mummy's Tomb was, a, a lot of people say it's the fourth Hammer Mummy movie. Although I would not call it a mummy movie, despite the name, because there's no mummy in it. Uh, it is about, I would call it a supernatural, ancient Egypt-themed horror film. That's what I would call it. Uh, it was directed mostly by Seth Holt, although he died during the shooting of this movie. Uh, it was a six-week shooting process, and he died in the fifth week. So longtime Hammer producer uh, Michael Carreras came in and finished up the movie so that they could put it out. Uh, Seth Holt had previously done a few films. I think he only did like six altogether. One of the earlier ones he did was this one, Scream of Fear, also known as Taste of Fear uh, in the United States. This was a Jimmy Sangster written thriller with all sorts of twists and turns. I think this was the first one of those that Jimmy Sangster did. And it did well, and people liked it, and Jimmy Sangster ended up writing a whole bunch of these. He did this one, he did Paranoiac, he did uh, a whole bunch of them. Oh, and he did this one, and when I say did, I mean wrote The Nanny, and Seth Holt also directed The Nanny. Um, both of them have twists and turns and suspense and uh, an element of mystery. You wonder why the people do the things they do in the movies. Uh, the Nanny had Betty Davis, who was like a classic Hollywood actress in the 30s, 40s. And by the 60s, this came out in 1965, she was an old lady, but still a very good actress. Um, so anyway, Blood from the Mummy's Tomb is basically about a group of people who went to Egypt and disturbed a tomb, just like every other mummy movie, except the body in this tomb had not been mummified, nor had it decomposed at all. It had had its hand cut off, which you can see here on the British film poster. This one here is the American film poster. Both good, I think. Uh, the British one is obviously fully drawn, and the American one... Actually, that one's drawn also, although it's a more realistic drawing. Um, Peter Cushing was supposed to star in this and be the like leader of this team of five who disturbed the tomb. But after one day of shooting, his wife became ill. I think she had emphysema. And uh, he left, and Andrew Keir replaced him. Andrew Keir was in a few films that Hammer did. Uh, he was in, uh, I think it was called The Pirates of Blood River with, with Christopher Lee and Michael Ripper and Oliver Reed. He, that was like 1962. In uh, 66, he did Dracula, Prince of Dar Darkness, which was the third Dracula film that Peter Cushing was not in. And... Uh, that was with Christopher Lee, of course, because he did almost all of the Dracula films. And then the next year he did the third Professor Quatermass film. He didn't do the first two, but he did the third one. He, I'm pretty sure he was Professor Quatermass in it. It was called Quatermass in the Pit. Uh, that's one, That's a movie where this, like, basically these people are digging around and I forget where, London, I think. I think they're digging around in London and then they find this, like, alien ship is just buried in in the, the tube system. So anyway, Andrew Keir did a pretty good job. Um, the beginning of this movie was really strong. Uh, there was all this craziness. They cut this woman's hand off, then starts crawling around. All the people who tried to bury her die because they all get their throats, like, torn out. But you don't... You don't see him get torn out, but you see, like, the aftermath. And then, anyway, like, fast forwards, Andrew Keir and his uh, four colleagues disturb the tomb, and each one of them takes a souvenir out of the tomb. Now, obviously, that's a bad idea, right? Because we've seen all the other mummy, mummy movies 
where people do that, and then the mummy comes back and kills them. Except in this one, it's not a mummy. And in, and the mummy, the, the dead person doesn't really come back. And instead, uh, the soul of the dead person goes into Andrew Keir's daughter, who looks exactly like the uh, Queen Tara. Who, this, this would be Queen Tara, and this would be the uh, woman who is supposed to be Andrew Keir's daughter. Same actress, her name's Valerie Leone. I think that's how you say her last name. Apparently, Hammer wanted her to be naked in this movie, and she wouldn't do it. And then she said she, she lost a lot of future roles because she wouldn't get naked. Although she gets, like, relatively close. Um, I give this one an 8 out of 10. Um, the beginning was so good. It was, like, perfect. And then as the movie went on, the pacing kind of, like, slowed way down. And there was a lot of talking. Uh, it was cool. I really liked the part where this, like... Girl is becoming more and more possessed, and she goes through and, like, collects all of the stolen artifacts back from the people and, like, basically kills them one by one. Um, they don't, like, directly show anyone being killed. Like, they just, like, kind of fall or whatever, and then it shows that their throat was ripped out. Assumedly by this severed hand, which in the beginning of the movie is crawling around and looks so cool, and then you don't really see that again. Uh, I think at, at the very end, they op someone opens up a box and it's like moving a little bit and then they like reattach it to the girl. So it would have been cooler with a lot more severed hand action, I think. But um, it was still good. So I give it an 8 out of 10. It had a good story. It wrapped up nicely. All in all, it was pretty solid. Um, kind of interesting. This is the sixth Hammer film from 1971 we've talked about and there's another one coming. Um, that's seven. In 1970, there were five. And before that, for the whole second half of the 60s, like from 1965 through 1969, there were only like one or two Hammer Horror films a year. And um, I think in the late 60s, I think horror really started to decline in popularity. And we talked about how in 1971, there were almost no mainstream American horror films and if you look at foreign mainstream horror films we had the five hammer ones and and like trog which was a british film that hammer didn't do uh warner brothers put that out and, and other than that there's there's not that much um 1971 has more than 70 but that it really declined i don't know if it declined because hammer tried different stuff or i guess more likely hammer tried different stuff because it was declining but I guess in 1970, they were like, man, this stuff's not working. We got to bring, we got to bring the horror back. In 19, in the 60s, in the early part of the 60s and the late 50s, and this includes Hammer Horror, the big thing across cinema, like all movies, was period pieces. Uh, in Italy, they do all those Hercules movies. There's a lot of gladiator movies, Roman Empire type movies. Um... There's a lot of movies coming out of England and America about, like, royalty. And, of course, uh, westerns are really big. And those are period pieces, like, automatically. Um, just, like, so much stuff in the 60s was taking place in the past. And, um, I don't know, uh, uh, Hammer... There was also a lot of spy movies in the 60s, like James Bond-type spy movies. In the 60s, Hammer was doing, uh, they did a string of these like Lost World fantasy movies, which I happened to just watch almost all of them this past week. Michael Carreras, who took up the directing on this, directed two of them. He did, uh, he did Slave Girls, which was like a lost, like a time warped lost civilization cave woman. Amazon, actually, it was more like an Amazon woman type movie. It was okay. And then he did The Lost Continent, which took place in the modern day, but the people are shipwrecked and come across a like lost world of monsters and people who descended from Inquisition era Spaniards. That one was awesome. The monsters in it were so cool. That was like 68. There was also 1 million years BC. Hammer did that. That was like 66. 
uh, She was 65. Those two I just mentioned were remakes of old uh, 30s and 40s Hollywood films, which Hammer had been doing anyway with the horror. I think they switched over and tried to do some of these fantasy films. And I think that, I don't know how she did, but I read that One Million Years BC was like super popular, which is strange because they don't even talk in that one. Um, Michael Carrere has produced most of those, almost all of them actually, that I just mentioned. Actually, I think he did produce all four that I just mentioned. And of course, he also did, uh, you know, he produced many of the Dracula films, many of the Frankenstein films, many of the mummy films that Hammer did, Curse of the Werewolf. Uh, pretty sure he produced Taste of Fear. And um, he was the son of one of the, like, main Hammer guys. Or maybe it was the grandson. Yeah, I think, I think his grandfather started Hammer when it was called Exclusive, and then it was passed to his father, James Carreras. Grandfather was Enrique Carreras. I wonder if they were Spanish because Enrique and Carreras both sound Spanish, but I couldn't find out. Um, and then Michael Carreras was like producing a lot of the 60s stuff along with Anthony Hines. Anthony Hines' father was like the other owner of Hammer, if I'm not, or maybe it was his grandfather too, but those two families like owned it for generations. Anyway, little Hammer background. Uh, this was definitely above average for 1971. And uh, the last Hammer film of 1971 is called, I think it's called Creatures Time Forgot. I think it's another like fantasy leaning film, but we'll see when we get there. All right, take care. See you next time.